it was good. You know, I mean, I wear a wig for the show, and so it had some benefits to the fringe. Um, and I also just felt like just doing something different with Brie and showing the time period difference. I mean, you know, she's got hair straighteners back now. She's in the 80s. Um, and I think I just wanted to kind of give her a bit more of a mature, different feel as well. And I think there's an element of Roger and Brianna leaving so much behind that often, you know, you do. And sometimes when you have a big change in your life, you change your hair or you do, you know, uh, you do <laughs> you do different things. Um, and so it was just, it felt, it felt right. It just felt like a little, to show time had passed and to show a change in where Brianna and Roger are as, as people, it just felt like doing something like that was a good, a good call for her. You know, I love a chunky sweater. Though. I really do. Roger um, loves a polo neck. He loves a, yeah, he loves a knitwear polo neck. Um, no, do you know, I enjoy the 18th century costumes. They're fun, but um, it was, uh, it was refreshing and new to come into the 80s. The late 70s and 80s was a, just a whole new thing. It was a whole new show that we basically got to embark on and explore and. Uh, Coming to Lallybrox, almost uh, it's, it's kind of a, an historical thing in itself. I know we've got a big caravan there, and I just I enjoyed shooting all that little uh, our own little Lallybrox TV show, mm -hmm. the Roger and Bree show. Yeah, it's, it's not great. just how it aesthetically looks; it's more that it feels so different. Like Richard said, yeah. it felt like a different show. So changing up the costumes and the hair and everything just gives a whole fresh energy that is really it's great. It makes it feel like season one for us again, doesn't it? Because it's so different. We're absolutely in our own little world on our own. Yeah, I'm proud of Roger and Brie now. I actually love their relationship. They've really got their stuff together. They communicate well. Um, I mean, yeah, in the past, Roger was exploring being a minister and Brianna went to support him doing that. And now as the tables have had to turn a little bit and um, yeah, Brianna's finally able to stretch those those intellectual muscles that she hasn't been able to and um yeah super proud of the woman she's become and the way she fights for things now she's more calculated now and she defends herself in a very more mature and held way and i'm, I'm super proud of her the two of the kids were great do you know what they're so talented the pair of them yeah. and when you op open in that door take after take to find little rosa sat in there with that cute little face yeah. Me just, she's them. just adorable and uh, the pair of them were just so great and so giving and just a lot of patience huh i mean yeah, maybe this is us being hard. rewarded for all of our patience yeah. with, with toddlers yeah but two of them were just a great, a great laugh and a great time to film with it's been a, it's, it's been a really journey. felt like a little family building yeah. isn't it it's really cute yeah. and there's nothing more rewarding than when you work with kids for a long time it was really hard saying goodbye to Andrew and Matthew because we really have become like parents to them haven't we and it's beautiful to see them start to put more and more trust in you and it was kind of like starting from scratch but I feel like um, yeah we got a good rapport with them really quickly didn't we. I mean poor Brianna her family dynamic since being a child has always been so complicated to say the least and I think she finally finally had the sort of postcard family that she'd always dreamed of you know she's got Another child on the way, children, Jamie, Claire, this whole environment, this whole world um, and community around her and then it's taken away again and so I think just to have that tether to her parents and to know the more that she reads the letters just to to live the life through them again and it's, it's almost like the rebirth of her parents and it's just, nobody gets that. It's just, um, yeah, it's wonderful because it feels like a parallel timeline as well. It's not like if you were to lose a parent and you find their diary, you're actually, it feels like these letters are coming um, in, in tandem as opposed to just from the grave. So it's really emotional for Brie. We did say that, didn't we, when Brianna was inventing the matches in season six, we were like, you know what, Brie, you know yeah. that your parents die in a fire. Yeah, well, what why are you yeah, why why the matches? That's obvious where that's going as well. The matches, your mum's making ether, you're making matches. Yeah, what could possibly go yeah. wrong? Um, but we had, all, I think we had a lot of fun. Do you know what? I can't remember all the ins and outs of of, of uh, what was particularly complicated with that scene, but I remember having to sit down and really go through the letters stuff. Yeah. Because it was messing with our heads, like where we were, what the dates, what about the realizations, like. But the burning of the house down, that was that was kind of fun because it was almost like you had inadvertently yeah. saved them from the fire by setting fire to the house. And again, the fact that Roger and Brianna can joke about things like that now. There's a world where. You know, five, six years ago, that would have been another argument with Roger and Brie, wouldn't it? Mm. Like, how oh, dare you say that? 
I didn't yeah. do it, whereas now they can kind of roll their eyes and laugh together. It's such a good team that they've built. I feel like often it's protecting him from himself and the, the environment that he's now in. In that I think Jemmy's had to mature very quickly as a young boy. He's been through so much more than most children or adults could ever fathom. I mean, he's been through stones. Um, he seems relatively unscathed by it. I think nowadays maybe you would have Jemmy talk to a professional, um, but obviously in those days that wasn't really an option, but it's more, I think, saving him from the kids at school um, yeah. in terms of, you know, if he were then, if he's if he's armed with this knowledge and it came out, it might harm him at some point. And so I think they're just trying to, you know, foresee that and protect him in that sense. I think later on that's a discussion that would be had once he's not, you know, you know, basically loading him with information that he can take, because he's at an age where he would, Talk about that, and he would, you know, talk about like, think twice, yeah, yeah, talk about it at school and tell his teachers, tell his classmates. And mm -hmm. People would ask questions, and that could get hellishly complicated. Well, he'd so, probably be bullied too, wouldn't he? If he's like, absolutely. "Oh, I've been through yeah, a yeah, story," yeah, and kids would be like, yeah. "Okay." Um, but yeah, it's about protecting him and just choosing, you kind know, of what and when. You know, what's right to tell him, and when is the time to do that? And I think that's an important conversation to have. But it feels like it should be a little bit later on, to me, anyway. It's a lot to overload a child's brain with. He's a great new addition and I loved working with Chris and it creates a really cool dynamic for the storyline. Um, and yeah, it's kind of cool that he comes across as a little bit charming once Brianna's trusted him again. She feels like they are actually quite close friends and she can confide in this guy. Um, and I think for her to have somebody who she can talk to about her job and um, and engineering and all that world is, is a really cool place for Brie, um, especially after Brianna and Roger having been in a, in a time period for so long where they can't talk about anything at all futuristic. Um, but yeah, obviously, of course, she is faced with such misogyny and um, she takes it in a stride and she overcomes it and she kind of gets bullied at work. And then, yeah, he's a huge, huge part of where the storyline then goes. And it's a really exciting one for us. Stop flirting with my wife, bro. Stop flirting with my wife. Leave my children alone. <laughs> um, yeah, I think he's got. His, I think he's got his suspicions about him. Um, but you know, I, I kind of loved watching the way Chris played that though, because he, he did it in such a way where, yeah, he, it was quite easy to be lulled into a false sense of security with him. He's all smiles and he plays, you know, his family situation um, really well. You, you end up finding a finding the need to, to sort of sympathise with him. And then, uh, yeah, it's just, he's very, he's very great at this kind of deceit, but in a way that really lures you into his charm. Mm -hmm.